Hello there friends and welcome. Today I have a very special and thematic build for you. My Immortal Lich King build for a very fun, extremely tanky fighter mage character. We start as a simple wizard, but we actually go through three whole prestige classes for once. Eldritch Knight for the fighter mage boosts, Lore Master to unlock some pretty fun stuff, and lastly Hell Knight Signifier, as to let our character not only equip, but also cast spells even in full plate. So we also have the style going for us. When I call this build immortal is because, as you can see here, Lich allows us to get the most absurd amount of hit points possible. We actually have more than 1300 hit points. And most of this, so the actual strong effects, Typhon Life, Feast of Blood, Negative Eruption, Vampiric Touch, these are all easily rechargeable sources because they are powerful offensive spells that not only deal damage, but also give us temporary hit points at the same time. Anyways, as I said, this build is meant to be a fighter mage, so we will have a decent amount of attacks per round, with quite extreme damage that is actually way higher than what you can see here, thanks to all of the nice leech boosts we get. So with a critical hit, we actually deal 310 damage, and this is just the first part of many so the first damage proc of a single attack and missing mythic critical for times 4 anyways we still have 115, 61, 65, 101, 34, 41, 113, 101 and 22 all of these here are just from the same attack split between a lot of force, holy, divine and holy elemental damage anyways we actually dealt close to a thousand damage with just this one hit Meanwhile, on a normal hit against this Mythic Merilith, we got 100 damage, then all of these other procs here, up to this last line, came from the same attack as well. Anyways, pretty much close to 500 damage on a normal hit. With this build, we even get to make use of a super unique weapon that allows us to scale both our attack bonus and damage from intelligence instead of strength the Death's Consonant Bardish. You even have Vampiric Regeneration to restore more than 30 hit points per attack. That's more than 100 per round. And yes, we can still cast all of the arcane spells in the game up to level 10 spells, including the super overpowered Lich spells, of course. At higher than 30 caster level, as this is missing some bonuses that only show during combat. And to top it all, as a Lich, you'll even be able to reanimate bosses and unique enemies like Koramzadeh here and the dreaded Vavakia Vanguard, even other mythic demons too, as almost permanent allies to fight for your cause. We don't really have high armor class, but you know, it doesn't matter, because we have the ultimate hit points value possible, even a phylactery to bring us from death, and of course, a very thematic spell to actually deny death. So honestly, you really aren't going to be dying with our immortal Lich King, as Liches should be. Lastly, a lot of powerful saves, and of course, all of the nice undead immunities that can be added even to your human party members. To put it simply, this is a very sustainable build, capable of high damage, while regenerating hit points and building up your defenses at the same time. So without further ado, let us get started. Alright, so when it comes to base class for our Lich King, we are going with Wizard and then Exploiter Wizard. Exploiter is pretty much the strongest archetype in Wrath of the Righteous for a wizard, and I know you might be asking why not go with a sorcerer instead. First you have the Arcanist Exploit ability, the most powerful one being Potent Magic to highly increase our difficulty class and caster level, and we get this as early as level 1. Second, we have the faster wizard spellcasting progression over let's say Arcanist and Sorcerer. And remember, now in Wrath of the Righteous, spontaneous casters actually learn their normal spells at much slower speed than prepared casters, even when merging with your mythic. Third, by going with an intelligent caster, we have nice synergy with the Death's Consonant Bardish, as I said before. Lastly, while it is true that sorcerers scale all from charisma, which means that eventually, a full lich will get to add their charisma modifier to bonus hit points, instead of constitution. This comes very late in the game, only at chapter 5+, plus, so that's like 60 to 70, even more, for other players' hours, that you'll have to wait until your charisma starts mattering for hit points. Plus, as I've just shown you, even with a full intelligent focus, we can still achieve more than a thousand hit points, so you know it doesn't matter. So let's start with our exploiter wizard. When it comes to race, human is my preferred choice as usual, because of the extra feat, 
which does matter for this build as we have to get both spellcasting and a lot of melee feats as well. And I have prepared a rather tight selection of feats. There isn't going to be much freedom until around like the last feats or so. For backgrounds you have two choices. If you want your character to have the highest value in all of the lore skills, then go with Oblate and Healer, because this will let your Lord Nature and Lord Religion skills, which are normally based on Wisdom, scale based on Intelligence instead, just like Knowledge Arcana and World. Otherwise, go with the usual Street Urchin and Pickpocket for the plus 2 bonus to Initiative, and Initiative does matter to our character, because even though we are a Fighter Mage, we still have access to a lot of debilitating spells, and the sooner we get to cast them, preferably before the enemy can act, the better for us. Because I already have characters that will get ranks in knowledge, nature and religion, I'll be going with pickpocket instead. Alright, so now for ability points allocation. Intelligence is of course our main attribute and you absolutely want 19. When it comes to strength, I would leave it at 14. And yes, I know I said that we eventually get a weapon that works based on intelligence. The thing is, this weapon is only achievable starting from chapter 3, so you will have to go some of the game without it. That's why a little bit of strength. And for carrying capacity too, since we eventually we get to wear armor. You don't want to be encumbered. You just need a little bit dexterity, some constitution, like I said before, it will be forever before you are able to get hit points from charisma as a lich. So unless you want to start with awful hit points, it is in your best interest to have some constitution. Remember that once you become a lich, you can actually respect your character just fine, as you remove points in constitution if you don't want them here. Wisdom can be a dump stat, you don't really need it. And as far as charisma, well, if you don't want to respect your character later on, then you can start with some charisma here, like you can dump wisdom to get 14 charisma, there's a lot of buffs that will enhance our charisma later on, so that we still get nice hit points from it. Otherwise, you can just ignore charisma, get constitution, then respect for Charisma once you become a full Lich. I'm not going to be respecting my character, so I'll start with these stats here. When it comes to skill points, well, Knowledge Arcana and World of course. As for the other skills, they are really up to you. I'll be going with Perception here, because eventually this will become a class skill for us. And I also like to have just a bit and use Magic Device to use some Cleric spells from Scrolls if needed. Persuasion will also become a class skill for us, but it takes a while. Alright, so as far as our level 1 feat selection for our Lich King build, the first is Spell Focused and Conjuration. Yes, I know this is meant to be a Necromancer character, but the Necromancer spells early game are, to put it simply, garbage, besides a few buffs. Ray of Enfeeblement and Cause Fear are complete trash compared to Grease, just like Scared when compared to Glitter Dust. And because I like to make builds that are fun to play from the very early game, this is why Conjuration. Now, if you're already like respecting this character from Chapter 3 on Mars or late game, then you can ignore the Spell Focus Conjuration line and go for Necromancy outright. However, you can also go with Conjuration here and then at Mythic Progression we'll get a feat that lets us apply our Conjuration bonuses to Necromancy as well. For your second feat as a human bonus, Martial Weapons Proficiency first because, well, we want to be a Fighter Mage, just like the Lich King. And Wizards... By default, they have very poor weapon proficiencies, as this is also a prerequisite for the Eldritch Knight Prestige class, which we'll be getting later on. Plus, early game, it lets you equip both Glaives and Bardishes, which are rich weapons, so our wizard can attack from safety behind our tanks, pets, and most importantly, behind our very own Grease Puddles. Lastly, for your Wizard Bonus feat, Greater Spell Focus and Conjuration, when it comes to your first exploit, the choice is very simple. Potent magic, it's actually kind of crazy that the best exploit in the entire game can be achieved right at level 1. So basically, whenever you use this, your next spell will have its difficulty class increased by 2, which is quite good, or the caster level increased by 2. Now, when it comes to spell selection, please remember that I already have a guide here for the best arcane spells in the whole game. Everything is there, debuffs, crowd control, so for now, I'll keep it shorter. Grease, of course, is a must. As a matter of fact, you'll be spamming this spell until around Chapter 3, when you get the Merged Lit spells. That's how good Grease is, especially when you combine it with Meta Magic. As for other spells, mostly the buffs, so True Strike, Shield, Reduce Person, Mage Armor, and Large Person. Remember, if you cast this on your character with a Bardish or Glaive, you'll gain even higher reach. 
and you can go with protection from alignment as well. As far as deity choice, to me, there is really only one, Urgatoa. Not only is she the goddess of undeath and undead, so very thematic for a leech run, there's also a lot of unique dialogues that you only get if you are following Urgatoa as a leech. As far as alignment, we are actually very restricted here. You have to be lawful evil, because the Hell Knight signifier prestige class requires you to be any lawful, and when it comes to leeches, you have to be lawful evil, so... Your other level 1 spells at level 2 don't really matter, <laughs> but you can pick like magic missile and magic weapon. Now for a level 3 feat, this is when I recommend you pick combat reflexes to enhance our attacks of opportunity. With Grease, it is very easy to get attacks of opportunity, and as a wizard we have a low amount of attacks per round. With this we get basically free attacks. As for your first level 2 spells, Glitter Dust no doubt. For another spell, well, I'd go with Mirror Image here, our first powerful defensive buff. At level 4, increase intelligence, which is also what we are going to increase on all the other levels. For more level 2 spells, False Life, one of the best buffs in the game, and this does stack with a lot of other temporary hit points buffs we will be getting. And then Sense Vitals, another very powerful spell to increase our DPS through free sneak attacks. Just don't bother casting this early on, and remember you know wizards can get spells by just learning them from scrolls, it's not like a sorcerer where you are limited to the ones you pick at level up. For our level 5 feat, improve at initiative, just so we can act faster and spam our powerful debuffing spells. As for your wizard bonus feat, the choice is simple too, heighten spell. Heighten is actually the best meta magic to buy as a feat during progression, because when it comes to most of the other meta magic feats, bolstering power, maximize, well, we can just get them through meta magic rods. Now, you can also go a different path, so if you prefer to enter the Hell Knight Signifier class at level 6 instead of Eldritch Knight, you really just need two levels of it, mostly if you prefer to be able to cast spells in heavy armor, even at the early game. I don't think it's much of a necessity because, you know, armor doesn't really matter for us, it's more for style, but you can do it. So, instead of improved initiative, pick the Arcane Armor Training at level 5, so you can then enter Hell Knight Signifier, into 6 and 7, and after that, go into Eldritch Knight. As for your second and last exploit, I'd say Wooden Flash is the best here, because it actually provides a stacking source of natural armor class. As for your first level 3 spells, well, haste as always is a must. Second, Heroism, unless you already have another character capable of casting it, like a Skull, a Bard, Woji for Nenyo. Then you can go with Stinking Cloud stead. and yes, I know that this is a poison spell, and all of the demon enemies are immune to poison. However, up to around chapter 3, we still fight a lot of human enemies, including annoying spellcasting human cultists, who will be shut down with Stinking Cloud just fine. Now, at level 6 onwards, we'll start progression into Eldritch Knight, a prestige class built for once. Eldritch Knight provides higher hit points than Wizard, but most importantly, full base attack bonus progression up to level 10, so that's plus 10 to base attack bonus we're getting. Lastly, bonus feats, including some fighter special feats. The capstone spell critical is pretty fun as well, because whenever you get a critical hit, the next spell you cast within two rounds will be a swift action, which means you can combine them with full attacking, or even casting another spell too in the same round. Eldritch Knight will grant perception as a class skill, and even athletics too, which you can get if you want, although you won't have high strength. But as a wizard, you have quite a lot of skill points for free. Now, for your Eldritch Knight bonus feat at level 1, Go with Weapon Focus and then Bardish. This is essential to open up a lot of other feats later on. So Eldritch Knight is what you are going to progress until around level 15. For your level 7 feat, because of our higher base attack bonus from Eldritch Knight, we can actually pick the highly awaited Outflank. At the same time as most of our other characters, pets included, to get started on our very powerful Chains of Attacks of Opportunity giving us free attacks then choose to continue progression into Exploiter Wizard. That's because at the first level of Eldritch Knight, you basically delay your spellcasting progression, but from 2 onwards you have full. Then for more level 3 spells, Greater Magic Weapon, unless you have like a Cleric or Oracle to cast it, and Vampiric Touch can be pretty fun for a Lich later on. For your first level 4 spells now, I would go with Greater False Life and Greater Invisibility. So Greater False Life actually stacks with False Life for even more hit points, and Greater Invisibility is something we can turn into 24 hours later on, so yes, we can actually become permanently invisible. For your level 9 feat, 
This is when I would get power attack, as in just another level we are merging with Lich and getting quite a massive boost to our overall power, especially to attack bonus buffs. Plus, since we are using a two-handed weapon, a Bardish, we get even higher damage boost from this. For more level 4 spells, you know it doesn't really matter. You can get like stone skin, but we are soon getting stone skin communal. <laughs> and let's just say animate that for the fun of it. At level 10, as an Eldritch Knight bonus feat, be sure to pick Dazzling Display, we aren't going to be using this, it's just to get Shattered Defenses later on as usual. Then for level 5 spells, Ecolocation is a must to bypass enemy consumment, and Genie Kind will play a very big role in our Elemental Barrage combo later on. Now starting from around this level, so level 10, you can already merge with Lich at Mythic rank 3, so you'll be learning more spells through mythic progression and having way faster spellcasting speed. The reason it's not going to show here for normal progression is that, well, for building purposes, I decided to keep the normal progression separate from the mythic one as usual. At level 11, be sure to pick Improved Critical and Bardish at last. Bardishes don't have the best critical range, they end up at 17 to 20 like long swords and great swords, but you know, our unique weapon is super fun and I was a bit tired of Falchions, for shards, scimitars, rapiers and all that. For more level 5 spells, Stone Skin Communal and the other one truly really does not matter. Well, Animal Growth can help unless another character in your party can cast it and you have pets of course. By now you already have the Lich spell, so... For your first level 6 spells, Greater Heroism, the animal buffs I prefer to leave to characters like Amelia or Suciel. And then I would also pick Transformation, just to highly increase your attack bonus to that of a fighter, which also grants extra attacks if you need, but it does block spellcasting, so be wary. At level 13, be sure to pick Shatter Defenses at last. Not only because at this point you already have the Frightful Aspect spell, but also the Lich Mythic ability that gives you a Fear Aura. Oh, so for more level 6 spells, you can pick like Hellfire Ray and Siroko, but you're not really going to be using them. For our level 14 feat, as a bonus Eldritch Knight one, Weapon Specialization and Bardish. I do get this somewhat late, the reason is you know, a plus 2 bonus to damage. In the grand scheme of things, you know, when compared to all of the nice damage boosts we get from Lich spells, it doesn't matter that much. As for level 7 spells, Legendary Proportions to buff allies, and Firebrand, the second part of our Elemental Barrage combo. At level 15 we have a feat and also our last level in Eldritch Knight. Now for this part it is very important that you pick the skill focus and arcana feat as to qualify for the lore master prestige class which will come at the next level. Your other level 7 spells can truly really be anything, they won't matter. Like let's say true sing and finger of death just for the thematics of it. Now at level 16 as I've just said we finally enter into Lore Master. Lore Master is a very fun prestige class that lets your character get quite a lot of stuff really. To the secret ability, you can pick any cleric or druid spell of the same maximum level that you can cast, and even bypass feat requirements through combat feat or rogue secret, which you'll be doing pretty soon. It even grants you class skills in like almost everything, which is why I said Persuasion and UMD would become class skills eventually. The first secret we actually want, well at least the one I find to be the best, is Cleric's spell, and then we'll be stealing the Divine Power spell from Cleric's. At this level, we'll already be able to turn our Divine Power, a one round level spell by default, into 24 hours duration. Plus it can grant up to plus 6 both to your attack bonus and damage rolls as a luck type, and Liches cannot get luck bonuses, unlike Angels. As for level 8 spells, the choice is actually pretty important, as you want both Cemental, an ultimate self buff, and Frightful Aspect too. We still want a few more levels into Lore Master, so let us keep going, just so we can get another secret. For our level 17 feat, this is also important, because you want to enter the Signifier class, you want Arcane Armor Training. As for more level 8 spells, anything you want, they pay in comparison to the Lich spells. For level 18, we have our last Lore Master level which thankfully gives us another secret. This can go two ways, basically, so you can pick Combat Feet and then Cleaving Finish as a way of getting even another free attack whenever you kill an enemy. Although it is limited to once per round. The reason we don't bypass it and go for Improved Cleaving Finish is that, unfortunately, the way Allcat coded the feats is that 
Improved cleaving finish will not work gameplay-wise unless you have cleaving finish, so you are kind of forced into picking both of them. Or you can also go for Rogue Secret and the Opportunist feat. Whenever an ally attacks an enemy at melee and you threaten them, you'll get a free attack as an attack of opportunity, although it is limited to just once per round. Overall, I think Opportunist is a better choice because... Well, Cleaving Finish requires us to kill an enemy, Opportunist just requires the enemy to be attacked. As for level 9 spells, these are important too. you want Heroic Invocation and Foresight, two of the best buffs in the game. Now for levels 19 and 20, we are finally entering the Health Knight Signifier class. Not only for some higher attack bonus, full spellcasting progression, but most importantly being able to cast in Mithril full plate. As for your level 19 feat, Greater Weapon Focus and Bardish. Then your Hell Knight Order, Order of the Gate, because with this we get you casting Mithril full plate with zero spellcasting failure chance. For more level 9 spells, I suppose you can go with Mind Blank Communal, for the new interaction this has with True Scene. And also weird if you want to cast the Illusion Instant Kill spells. Now at last we are at level 20 for the second level in Signifier. And at last the Arcane Armor Mastery upgrade, as you truly have no Arcane spell failure chance. Alright, now let's talk about Mythic progression for our Lich King build. The best one overall is going to be close to the Abyss for the extra attack it gives you. And you know, as a wizard character, even a fighter mage, you'll end up with one less attack than a full fighter. And Liches have many buffs that increase damage. The Dance Macabre ability, which is the Lich special one, isn't really powerful. At most, you gain the Cleric Channel negative energy feature, which you know means nothing, because Liches have many spells to heal undead, so pick close to the Abyss. For Mythic level 1, the choice, as usual for any Merged caster, is going to be Abundant Casting. Nothing really at this level is going to be as effective for a spellcaster. Well, most of them anyways. For Mythic level 2, the usual extra mythic ability and improved abundant casting. With this we'll get more slots for our Lich special spells later on. For mythic level 3, another abundant casting, the last one, greater. Although at this point you should be like level 10, it's going to take us another level to get access to level 7 spells. Level 7 Lich spells are some of the best in the whole game, because you have not only the Blessing of One Life spell, to give your living allies undead immunities and negative energy affinity. But most importantly, the Feast of Blood spell, which is basically the best area of effect lich damage spell until negative eruption later on. Don't forget to choose to merge with wizard here. As far as your skeleton companion, to me the best one is the marksman, because the thing is, the game will already choose the feats for your skeleton ally, you can't really choose them. And the Marksman has the best feat selection of them all, the others have a few wasted feats. Plus, the Skeleton by default has high dexterity, with Marksman it becomes even higher, and it is just what a ranged character needs. For the first Lich power, remember that, as usual, I already have a full Lich guide, you can find links to the side here or in the video description, where I explain every one of these abilities in depth. For now, it's going to be simpler, so we want Fear Control. This is by far the best one to pick early on, especially for a Fighter Mage Lich King character. It grants a very big boost, not only to attack rolls, but also damage, against creatures that are frightened or shaken. And as a Lich, this is super easy because, well, this also grants you a Fear Aura, that can achieve quite decent difficulty class because it has a lot of modifiers. Not to mention the fact we are soon able to cast the Frightful Aspect spell, which automatically shakens the enemies anyways, so they will proc this. For Mythic Rank 4, you actually have two choices here. My preferred one is Extra Mythic Ability and Elemental Barrage, because at this point we can already cast both Genie Kind and Firebrand to proc this on all hits. The problem is, these spells are short duration and it's going to take a while before we can turn them into 24 hours. So if you prefer to have earlier access to Elemental Barrage, although with limited uses, pick it here. Otherwise, if you'd rather wait until we can turn them into 24 hours duration, go with Enduring Spells first. I'll be picking Elemental Barrage because you know, it's a lot of extra damage, even if you won't be able to use it on every single encounter early on. It's still great for bosses and tough encounters anyways. Then, for your first skeleton upgrade, the choice is very simple, Fighter is by far the best of them all. And then, you actually get a bonus fit here, bypassing requirements. The best one is no doubt, Shatter defenses, because like I said, it's very easy for our Lich to shake and fear enemies. 
and our skeleton will get to attack them based on their flat-footed armor class. Yes, this does work with ranged weapons too. Then you want, of course, weapon focus into long bows and weapon training into bows. For Mythic level 5, this is when I would get started into the Enduring Spells line. The reason is, at this point, well, most likely at Mythic 6, we'll already be able to extend our one-round level spells into 24 hours duration, something that is very fun for Lich. They have a lot more spells to benefit from this than Angel. And also the highest boost to spell level through Dark Rites, which means we can do this neat interaction even earlier. Then for Mythic level 6, extra mythic ability and greater enduring spells. At this point, you can absolutely already make everything into 24 hours duration. Now, starting at around this mythic ranks, you can also get expanded arsenal as to apply our conjuration bonuses to necromancy for plus 2 to DC. After all, we already have the best leech spells by now. Or like I said, you can just respect your character to get the necromancy feats as normal progression. This build won't have the ultimate DC possible, because it does have a fighter mage focus, but you know, you don't really need extreme DC even to hit enemies on unfair, and I already have a guide that you can check here, where I explain how to properly debuff enemy saves, even on unfair, to properly instant kill and heavily debuff even the demon lords. Debuffing is the key, it's not just about DC, you know. So you might even not consider getting expanded arsenal if you prefer. For a second leech power, well, since we are a fighter mage, lich king sort of character, my preferred choice here is weapon of death. Because it adds the living bane property to your weapon, which grants extra irresistible damage against any living target, and demons are actually living targets. The reason I don't go for deadly magic is that our phylactery, an item we'll soon get, already grants us free uses of deadly magic. For mythic level 7, ever ready. We do get this somewhat late, but you know, there's not much we can do since we need all of our other mythic abilities. At this point, we will be able to get a massive boost to our attacks of opportunity, damage and attack bonus wise. For mythic level 8, you have two choices, mythic improve at critical or mythic power attack. I kinda prefer mythic power attack because you know, it's a static bonus that always works. And bardishes don't have the best critical range possible. Then for your second skeletal upgrade, I actually prefer the Skeleton Cleric here, because you gain some powerful self buffs, most importantly Divine Favor and Divine Power. As for Mythic Rank 9, you have a few different choices, so if you have a Skull that can grant you Pounce, you can go with Mythic Charge, because for our third Lich Power, we can pick Death Rush, which grants even more damage on charging, so whenever you charge with Pounce, you actually have 2 d6 points of extra damage per Mythic Rank, for a total of 20, kinda a lot considering you're adding this on every single attack. But if you don't have a skull, it's kinda meaningless. In that case, you can go with, for example, last stand, although trust me, it's very hard to actually kill a lich. You can also pick Archmage Armor for more armor class, but you know, it, it kinda defeats the point of going with a full plate. There's also Ascended Element and Negative Energy, but we have Deadly Magic. So I'd say it's kind of a choice between last stand and Mythic Charge. Since I do have a skull, I'll go with Mythic Charge and then Death Rush here to truly maximize our damage as a true Lich King. As for Mythic Rank 10, I would pick Mythic Weapon Specialization. And you can of course also go for Mythic Improved Critical. Then you can go with either the Skeleton Inquisitor or Magus Upgrades. Alright, so now let us cover gear for our Lich King build. The ammo let you know of Alexis as always, but before that... You can go with amulets of natural armor, or the rare amulets that increase initiative. As far as the armor slot, well, after you enter Hell Knight Signifier and get two levels into it, you'll be able to have both heavy armor proficiency and cast spells in heavy armor, full plate even, so long as they are mithril full plate. So mithril full plates will be your ultimate armor choice, as the mithril armors have lower spell failure chance, which we can overcome. When it comes to the robes, the robes of the Seven Sins are pretty much the best now for any caster character, not only for the increase to caster level by plus 3, and Liches already have the highest caster level possible by default, but also for the extra boost to DC. You can get this from the latest DLC, the Treasure of the Midnight Isles, but before finding this robe, you can also go for example with the Robe of Determination to increase the power of your Fortitude spells, and some of the lead spells are based on fortitude. As for the belt slot, 
For most of the game, belts that increase both your strength and constitution, but after the Leech transformation at chapter 5, constitution stops mattering for us, so you know, just strength and dexterity belts. When it comes to the gloves, I really use embroidered gloves as always, for higher defensive values, otherwise, you can always go with the Fencer Gifts glove, as they do empower two-handed weapons, like our Bardish, the gloves of the Death Dealer 2 for higher sneak attack, and we do have the Sense Vital spell and the Baphomet skill book. And the Twisted Temptation gloves can help as well, even if we don't have enchantment spells. They still apply a nasty debuff to the enemy's saving throws. Now, for the boot slot, because I have a Scald with Pounce and I enjoy the charge ability, I like the boots of Stampede for higher damage on charging. You can also go with Abyss Walkers for an extra dodge against demons to armor class and an additional attack of opportunity, and of course the infamous Ronex Sacrifice boots for all of the absurd bonuses it gives you. It's just that this character doesn't really need high dexterity, since we are using full plates, even Mithra ones. As for the helmet slot, well, early game you want helmets that increase your intelligence, the best one being Draven's Hat. Later on, especially when you become a Lich, you'll want headbands of mental perfection, or at least ones that increase both your intelligence and also charisma for higher hit points. The best one being Darkness Caress. As far as the glasses slots, you have the glasses of Undeniable Truth, also from the latest DLC, for the nice plus 2 profane bonus to initiative, also the goggles of Piercing Gaze for the insight bonus to attack and damage against evil outsiders, so demons, and a very high boost to Persuasion. When it comes to the cloak, we actually have two different choices for the best item, so... The first is the Lich version of the Mythic Cloak, the Bound of Possibility, this actually has one of the best effects of all of the special cloaks, as it empowers your Lord Beyond the Grave ability to grant an additional plus 4 stacking bonus to Strength, Dexterity and Charisma. So our Undead characters, for example, have a plus 9 total to these attributes, as untyped, by the way, so stacking. You can, however, also go with the Cloak of Darkest Sprites, which grants you a resistance bonus to saving throws, but most importantly, enhances your Dark Wraith abilities to grant a plus 2 profane bonus to armor class, to your character and all of your companions, and even a plus 2 bonus to difficulty class, quite powerful. The problem is, as far as I have tested, the cloak in particular will only work if equipped on your main character, and well, we kinda have to choose between the bound of possibility to further empower our undead allies, or the darkest rites to increase the power of our single Lich character. Now for another very powerful cloak, but this one can be equipped on party members, for which you benefit from the effect, we have the Wrath of the Undead. It is a plus 5 cloak of resistance, that grants the wearer a fear aura of the C33 wheel, it doesn't really matter because even if the enemy makes the save, they'll still become shaken for 5 rounds instead, so kinda like the Frightful Aspect spell, with this we eliminate the use of casting that. Lastly, and here's another very powerful part, all of your undead allies will gain a plus 4 circumstance bonus to attack rolls against enemies under fear effects, including this shaken without the save, and also empower them to deal an additional 2d6 precision damage on a successful hit. Overall, a pretty stacked cloak for a leech, but like I said, feel free to equip it on other characters of your party, since it works based on an aura. When it comes to the ring slots, you know the ring of evasion as always, to avoid damage from any annoying area of effect spells, especially some that mythic demons like to use. Lastly, I also like the ring of imminent demise. It's not that powerful, but you know it grants a plus 2 competence bonus to attack and damage with two-handed weapons, which matters if you don't have a bard, as the scald can't really provide damage as competence, only attack bonus. And you know, it does have a decent effect on an attack of opportunity. The enemy has to make a fortitude saving throw of somewhat low DC, 26, or be knocked down. As for the Bracer slot, the choice, I mean, at the late game is kinda given. You'll want your Phylactery, which is equipped at the, as the Bracer for some reason. It grants you the Deadly Magic ability for free, which is very powerful, and also why I don't bother picking it during Mythic Progression. Lastly, once per day, whenever your character dies, they'll be brought back to full health. Another part of why we are pretty much immortal. But you know, your phylactery only comes late game at chapter 5, before that, you can go with other braces like braces of armor. Now let's talk about the weapon slot, so of course, our main weapon in the start of the show is the Death's Consonant Bardish, as I said before. It lets both your attack bonus and damage rolls, 
scale based on intelligence instead of strength, and we are a high intelligence build. I really wanted a build to make use of this weapon because it's kind of fun and very unique. Plus, as a leech, you can enhance it with a lot of other stuff. Evil Outsider Bane, Nullifying, Living Bane, Holy, Good Align, all of these are from spells, actually. Besides that, we also have the Quarter Staff of the War Mage, just for the plus 2 bonus to DC if you want you know to cast a spell at the highest power. And for the very early game, you can go with Glaives, like the Marching Terror, as we do have martial weapons proficiency, or of course Bardishes too, like Decimation. Lastly, let us cover our quick slots, which do matter a lot for any spellcaster. First, the Greater Quicken Metamagic Rod, as usual, to quicken some very powerful level 7, 8 and 9 spells, most importantly, Feast of Blood and Negative Eruption. Corrupt Magic can work too. Second, the Grand Master's Rod, of course, to empower and maximize Feast of Blood and also Siphon Life at the same time. The Devouring Lust Metamagic Rod can also be quite powerful because you find it at Chapter 3 and it does let you maximize basically any spell. The Dragon Familiar Gyrsegax for even more damage with Elemental Barrage. Lastly, I have chosen the Skeletal Finger Rod here because it actually has a unique effect if used by a Lich. So whenever you kill a living creature using Bone Shaker, Vampiric Touch, Bone Shatter or Exsanguinate, mostly going to be Exsanguinate here, the rod will recover one daily use, and it is a quicken rod of up to level 6 spells. The maximum recovery is 3 times per day, but you know, it's still a pretty fun and useful item, because of this neat Lich synergy it has. Alright friends, so this was it for my Lich King build. I hope you've enjoyed this, after all I think it's one of my most unique builds, especially for the absurd higher than 1000 hit points we have. If you've enjoyed this guide, please remember to like, subscribe and even consider becoming a channel member to access some neat exclusive content, and even request videos. Thank you for watching and see you next time, friends.